When the right people come together at the right moment, when they care almost as much about winning as they do about each other, they can become the best of the best. Here we go! It's the best soccer show. Jason Davis live from Puerto Rico. Oh. And Jared Dubois somewhere in the Los Angeles metropolitan area. Yeah, don't disclose. Can you guys call that the whole area? Well, I mean, yeah, the greater Los Angeles area, but in particular, the Inland Empire where all the true players yeah. live. I know that you're from the Inland Empire, but isn't there like a name for like all of LA that's not the Los Angeles LA? Basin? I, I don't know. They sub, the, the Southland? <laughs> no, they say the Southland. That's the one I was looking for because there are okay. shows on television called like the Southland. And we're supposed to know, not living in California, that LA is the Southland. If you say the Southland to anybody else on this side of the country, they'd be like, what is that? Like Georgia? Is that like Mississippi, the Southland? Where is that exactly? Uh, I still understand. Okay. I, I still understand a lot of the things you guys do about geography over there. Like, I still understand <laughs> you know? how Kansas City is Midwest. I don't understand that at all. Like the, the, Midwest, the Midwest is just very vast. We basically said, like, everything between Ohio. We've made the Mid and Midwest too mid. Too, too much. Mountains, or actually Nebraska. So, basically, Ohio to Nebraska is so You're telling me Colorado's not Midwest? No, Colorado's West. For sure, oh. Colorado's West. I'll tell you, people in California, we think that's the Midwest. That is not the Midwest. I'm just saying, you're, is- you could say that, but I'm just telling you, I, I think we would consider anything, I don't know, it's messed up. But, uh, <laughs> but, but now know. that I got my 4x4, four four, I'm going to go see some of those uh, those mountains and stuff like that. Last week, we did, we, we determined that you have no idea where Iowa is. Not last week, the week before that. But uh, I know w- where it is, and I knew a few facts about it. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Nick can fill us in now because he's been out there. But, uh, but by the way, so I, 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 I told you I wanted to get to this off the top. So today's my anniversary. Okay, so uh, happy anniversary to the lady that puts up with me. Um, and this weekend we're t- taking my new four by four up to the mountains, right? Just she and I. Maybe there'll be some nature doing it. I don't know. But Marty McFly in it out there with the. Good okay, chicken. that's what I wanted to get to. So I told my wife I came to a realization. Uh-huh. That I think for men of a certain age, being you and I with grays on the side of their heads, I oh, think well, many of us here. are. Not so much here, but go ahead. Many go ahead. of us are chasing uh-huh. that Marty McFly four by four in the garage dream. I think that's what it goes back to for me. Why I have this fascination of why I need a four by four. It goes back to Marty McFly okay. and that truck being the coolest thing I'd ever seen in my life when it happened. It was a very cool truck. It was a very tr- cool truck. Now. I don't know a lot about trucks. I didn't follow up my, my watching of Back to the Future when I was a kid into learning about trucks. But isn't it like, isn't the thing about Marty McFly's truck that it has like the lights on the top? Like it's the, got the KCs. It's got the KCs, KCs on top. The KC lights. What else? Lifted? On, oh, yeah. He got a lift on there. I don't think there's okay. a winch on it, though. I think that's more of like uh, these days, the overlanders to do it and okay. stuff like that. I'm not sure if yeah, he had no, a winch this, on this there. Put, I just want to understand. So this puts Marty McFly squarely in... A very suburban, almost rural kind of California setting in in this town. What was the town again? Was it Hill in Valley. California? They were they in Hill, California? Sure. What? It was California. Hill Valley was in California. Is it really? That. You didn't know that? No, they I didn't sure. know it was in California. Did they say that? Well, I guess it kind of has to be because when they go back in time, they're in the middle of the Old West. Exactly. It's in it's in California. You, you, you didn't know that you're a Californian born and bred. You didn't know that that's where Back to the Future took place. I don't remember there being any mountains or anything up in there or, or beaches. I don't know. Well, it, there's a, California. I never googled far. where Lions Estates is. <laughs> um, I think I think that that's true. We were you. I didn't know you were going to bring up Marty McFly's truck. Certainly thought that I like. I certainly thought like that's a very cool truck. I would love to have that truck. I don't think I've been chasing. Is there another car? What's another car that uh, from growing up that would be your midlife crisis car? Oh, and Nick, you can get on this too if you have something. I don't know if you have one in mind or like, anything. Not necessarily pop culture influence, just in general. It could be both. Yeah, yeah. What's what's your midlife crisis car? Because I'm definitely living mine at this point. Well, there's no, I don't think there's any reason I need a rear lock or a disconnecting sway bar. <laughs> and a complete tele- telemetry kit telling me my exact pitch that roll is. at departure angle, but I have it in case I need it. But you have in case you need it. Okay. Nick, what you got, babe? I kind of wanted to have Knight Rider. 
that's the other one that came to my head. But here's the thing: that's you can't have that. You, I mean, you, I mean, you can, but you can't. I guess you could go find yourself an old what Firebird, Pony Thunderbird, Firebird. It might have been a Firebird. I, Ooh, I Delorean. Had a Delorean would be a good one. For stingrays for a long time, but I don't know where that where that came from necessarily. Like a Corvette long, stingray. Yeah, and they brought it. They brought that back the style. They brought back that body style. It, it kind of works, actually. It still kind of works. It's working uh, out pretty well too with the new Bronco. I think, it, like look wise, I think that's a that's a good one they're too. They're doing so. a lot of that retro stuff. I I actually did not know this, and maybe as a Californian and a and a Southland resident, or whatever you are, maybe you know this. Huh. I didn't realize that Ford basically shut down production of the Bronco because of OJ. Like I didn't know that that. Oh yeah. Like, you know it's funny. Know. Just before we came in here, I was watching a video. Do you, know, you know Donut Media is? You heard of Donut Media? They're like their like car uh, YouTube channel and stuff like that. But I was just watching this video of theirs where it was like the old Bronco versus the Blazer and how the Bronco is just killing it right now in terms of the look of it versus what the Blazer is doing. But, um, and they were talking about the fact that OJ really did kind of kill the Bronco. Like the sales were already not great. Then, like 96, they killed it in 96 right after well, we, the, the, the we, were, we were transitioning into like the high, the high, the crossover suv like like that was starting to happen in the late 90s right like minivans 96 over. is a big year killed yeah. the bronco oj yeah. went on a drive and mls started that was night mls went on oj went on a drive in 94 mls started in 96 oh they, you're right they, they killed the bronco in 96 they Sorry. Killed the bronco in it took two years after. it took two years if from to go from 94 having a world cup and launching a league and for oj to take a drive and kill the bronco <laughs> Okay, okay. I don't know where we're going to go with all that. I do have one question based on the, the mention of Knight Rider, and I had this thought the other day. Which was the, when you were a kid, which was the cooler voice? Kit, Knight Rider's, uh, Kit's voice on Knight Rider or Optimus Prime's voice on the Transformers? <laughs> cooler voice yeah which one did you like what do you what do you think was the cooler voice? i mean optimus prime's voice is pretty damn cool because it has that deep like that deep deep sound yeah. you know i think that one's cool probably out. cooler yeah that, that one's definitely cooler but kits is kits is almost like because kit has a little bit of snarky englishman kind of uh, like vibe you know, it's not actually an Englishman's like accent, but no. you picture a guy with a spectacle. You know, like someone like this, like that's that's taking the piss Mr. out of you half Fiend the time. With a spectacle, okay. Sure. Mr. Belvedere, yeah. Well, yeah, but I'm saying the actor who was Kit. Oh, I didn't know Kit. that. Are you serious? Mr. Oh Feeney is the voice of Kit. I, I'm gonna have to ask. I'm gonna Nick Soup, Nicky Soup and Sal to get on this show for a second. Nick, you knew that. Yeah, this I knew that. This is ridiculous. You, How did you not connect the fact dude, that you Jared, had I had a shrine to Michael Knight in my house, like in my in my room from like 17 to 18 years old. Like, how did I not know this? The first episode I watched of Boy Meets World, I was like, oh, that's Kit. That's the difference between you and I. First episode of Boy Meets World, I was like, who's this Topanga chick? <laughs> okay. I did that too. Okay. You can, some people can operate on multiple levels. And I was like, they got two guys with hair curtains on this show? Oh, that's too many. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's get into the soccer, <laughs> the soccer show. Um, the big news, look, there, there's not a lot happening on the national team front. We obviously could talk Major League Soccer. A few signings. The, the big news, uh, yeah, some movement for, for national team players, which certainly matters, and we will get to some of that. I think Malik Tillman's name is out there. Chris Richards' name is out there. Um, who am I missing, Jared? There are a couple of names. Chris Richards? Uh, you think Chris Richards? I'm sorry. I did say Chris okay, Richards. Sorry about that. Pay attention. I literally said it three seconds ago, and you'd already... Okay. And, and I'm doing other things as well. There's some player movement. But the biggest thing is that Christian Pulisic is in the United States with Chelsea. Where, By the way, he doesn't seem to be leaving Chelsea anytime soon. He's it doesn't look like it, man. About his commitment to the club. He even said, like, it's great to have Raheem Sterling here. It just means it's what big clubs are all about. We'll, we'll see what that means. But he talked to Hercules Gomez on uh, Football Americas on ESPN+. Plus. He talked about his position at Chelsea, but he was also asked by Herc about the World Cup. So let's roll the clip of Christian Pulisic answering a question about the U.S. and what they want to accomplish at the World Cup. Christian, what would you consider a successful World Cup for the United States men's national team? I'm not going to put an, an exact label on how far exactly we think is successful or not successful. I think we're going there with the intention to, to go win the World Cup. There's no reason why you, any team should go there without that confidence. And that's exactly how we're going to go you know, into this big event. And uh, we're going to go in as a confident and a hungry side that is uh, not going to back down from anyone. And we feel that we can, we can really make, make moves in this World Cup. 
what do you say to those people who maybe scoff at the idea of the United States men's national team winning a World Cup, that idea that you have? I mean, I don't think if you don't believe that it can happen, it won't happen. So, I mean, anything we've seen, uh, we've seen crazier things happen for sure. And, and I truly believe that we have a that we have a strong team, a strong group of guys that can that can accomplish anything. So uh, that's just the way I'm the way that I think and the way that I'm going to believe going into this into this World Cup. So there it is. Christian what, what, what's he going to say, though? Come on. Like, it, I know, man. I know. Is I any look- American athlete allowed to say anything other than we're going to win? No, I don't think so. I don't think they should. Like, I don't think. Okay, he didn't say we're going to win. He didn't guarantee they're going to win a World Cup. We're going to win. Like we're going there to win. I'm sorry, not that's what. Going to the World Cup to attempt to win the World Cup because why else are you there? What's the point? Is there something like? Is there just something like? Look, cultural differences can be really intense, and I run into it all the time. Like, is there just a different way of thinking? Like, if you grow up in, I don't know, give me a a middle of the road. a middle of the road European soccer country. If you if you grew up in Poland, are you just supposed to go? You know what? Getting to the World Cup. You know we're not going to win the thing, but you know quarterfinals would be lovely, and and that that would make us that that's what we should be aiming for. Aiming for the quarterfinals. Is that is that the mentality? Is that should we be doing that? Is that something we as Americans are we so uh, old, like it's so um, so self centered that we think we can do things like win a World Cup when everybody? Well, else we got to remember. I, I believe Herc's question was. What represents a good World Cup? I think that's what he asked. I didn't think he asked, like, are you? Can you win it? Pulisic chose to to elevate it to that to that level. Because, and because, I think I think Steve Hildog was right. I don't think it was the 2002 World Cup, but I think it was either 2010 or 2006. I believe Donovan Dempsey. These guys were talking about going there with the intention of trying to win. Every player is trying to win. Every player you don't don't go, especially as an American athlete. Don't go. If you don't are going there to win, that's an, most of one of the most American sports things that can be out there. We we had the opposite of this back in 2014. So uh, uh, Beanie Smokey is saying what what I wanted to bring up in 2014. Jurgen Klinsmann said, "No, we're not going to win the World Cup. Our goal is to get out of the group." Something like that. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. He basically poured cold water on the idea of doing anything better than getting out of the group for the U.S. Men's National Team and. I remember some people in soccer media in the United States saying, what the hell, dude? Like, even if this team might not be good enough, there that's not – if that was the – like, if you knew that was the case before you even went, why play the tournament? Why not just hand the trophy to the team? Everybody thinks Germans don't believe in miracles. I don't know what to tell you, Ben. Maybe it's because it hasn't happened to them before. Like, I mean <laughs> – Yeah, right. We that, beat the Russians in, in 80. What the hell, man? We, we beat the English in 1776. Like, like we do things. <laughs> Yeah, we, we we do things, okay? Now, granted, these days the things we do are probably not as American as they used to be, but we try to do things still. And then from a sports perspective, I mean, Pulisic's towing the line. Does he believe it? I don't know, but I kind of dig the fact that I hope in, in his heart, like he's thinking like, but, okay, let me see, I'm going to go at this a different way. Okay. Why wouldn't Christian Pulisic think that he can win a World Cup? Had any American ever won a Champions League before him? Okay, I mean, like, well, okay, like playing in it, actually, like, like the contributing to, you know, Correct. like you have Karofsky yeah. at one point. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, Christian Pulisic is the guy who breaks down barriers for Americans in Europe. That's yeah. who he is. Yeah. So why wouldn't he think... First, first you, you, player looked like a boy band member from 1998. Like not the Europe. first. Absolutely. Not oh, the first. Sure. We have one Stu Holden that was towing that line way back in the day, as well as Landon Donovan. We, we have a bunch of those. By I've the way, who that. did it better uh, for, in terms of tips? Are we talking about Landon Donovan or Christian Pulisic? Here's the difference to me. Do you think Landon Donovan went to a salon and or person to have his tips done, or he put the shower cap with the holes in it, and Joe Cannon is pulling out each <laughs> little individual strand in a shower cap and doing it in their bathroom right. when they live together, versus I'm Christian that. Pulisic, who went to the yeah. team barber that they flew in. Mm, I, did he? Okay, I guarantee you Landon Donovan didn't go to a salon to get his hair did. I'm pretty sure so that was a home. And plus, a it, was a, it, was a, it was a straight bleach that grew out the tips. I why. And and I don't. There wasn't even a YouTube video to learn how to do it back when Landon Donovan was dropping that. You're gonna have so, to ask. You're gonna, you're gonna have to your, ask your WNBC homie Brian Dunsett and see how they did it back in the day because he went tips. <laughs> yeah, like there's certain a few guys went tips. Yeah. Like yeah. Petkey Donovan, they went full yellow and then just let it grow out to tips, which right. is like that's the easier man's version of this. But mm-hmm. but back at Christian Blissick, why wouldn't this guy think that? Hey man, everything else I do 
comes up smelling awesome. Why oh, can't why why, why not this as well? Somebody in the chat said this, and, and and I don't. I think this is probably what it is that somebody said it was being spun as a guarantee. Well, I don't think. Look, I don't think you can listen to the watch Hercules Gomez ask a question. Listen to Christian Pulisic answer it. Have, have Hercules Gomez, you know, come back with what do you say about people who say that's, you know, that's what did he? What was the wording that he used? That that was arrogant. I don't know what he said. Like, yeah, he, sometimes he asked, that. He followed up like, what would you say to people who said this? And and Pulisic's like, well, if you don't believe it can happen, it never will happen. People, if people can't watch the clip and really believe he's guaranteeing anything, what I see is a as a, a an athlete who believes he's capable of something, wants to believe that his team is capable of something, and it is not eliminating the possibility that that could happen. There's no cockiness there. It's simply saying, we want to play the best possible games we can, and that might, you know, why not dream of that? Like, what, what, how is that in any particular way a guarantee? It's not, right? So, but if it gets spun that way, and again, if certain soccer cultures and certain Americans or people living in America who ascribe to this idea that of know your place, if they see it, they're gonna they're gonna jump on it, right? And then we get into this whole. Oh, okay, thing but about... at, at twenty, if at twenty fourteen, Romeo Lukaku said yeah. going into that 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 cup that Belgium was going there to win, would they be laughed at? Because Belgium obviously didn't win, but that's what we talk about in terms of equivalency, potential equivalency of what the U.S. is building right now at the level and youth that they're doing it. The closest thing I can think of is Belgium twenty fourteen. Would anyone bat an eye if Romelu Lukaku said, "Hey, we're going there to to win"? No, no. no. It's because we're Americans. Yeah, right. It, because, but, and, but there's a history of Belgium players, Belgian players being in Champions League level, but not the Belgian team. No, that's true. But again, they're part of the uh, wider view of Europe, right? They're they're basically Dutch. They're basically German. They're basically French. That that c- conveys upon them. This idea that they're going to be able to compete with. Okay, them. what about this take? And this oh, is the traditional American take, okay? This is from David D in the chat. It says, Polisic should have said that the goal is to get out of the group and from there to take it one game at a time and play our very best. And if we do that, we believe we can get far. Why? Why that is, that? That's the political he answer, right? He doesn't have to say that. Okay, wait, wait, why is that a thing he has to do? Why, 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 isn't a kid, why isn't a kid with some blonde highlights allowed to dream? By, by the way, Burhalter, they played the clip or he responded to what Pulisic said on Football Americas, and Burhalter was much more political. He was much more like, well, I love our players saying that. I want our players to believe that. He didn't take it on himself. He didn't say, well, this is our, we think we can win. He said, we have in our minds, we're thinking about this as two tournaments. I'm, we're thinking about this as the, as the group stage. You get out of the group stage, and then you think about it as the knockout rounds. And yeah. then... You know, that's it. I, I think, think this is not a controversy. This should not be a controversy. I mean, I know we're talking about it, which kind of feeds into it. Now it's it's very meta that we're Look, making. I'm happy he's got that attitude. Now, is it pie in the sky? Maybe, but whatever. Can I, can I ask a question? Do you think it would be different? Do you think it would be received differently if it was Weston McKinney who said it and not Christian Pulis? Oh, absolutely. Isn't that absolutely. Oh, you mean the guy that plays with a remote control car in the locker room? Like th- th- that guy saying something like this? It's like, oh, yeah, that's just Weston. That is, yeah. That's just Weston. Like, right. Right. I mean, Weston's going to tell you that, if, so that, he, that somehow Beyonce's going to dump Jay-Z for him. You know, like the dude's got, the dude's got a faith. He's got, he's got confidence in a way that Christian Pulisic is not the same cat. I think it is interesting because it, be, it would be like, oh, the, the, you know, he wouldn't be like, oh, look at the American who thinks that they can maybe win the World Cup. Isn't that that cute? And a pandering, you know, patronizing pat on the head. It would be like, oh, Weston McKinney is just a confident guy. Like, that's just who he is. And, you know, probably the Americans can't win it, but whatever. Weston McKinney, I mean, I, I think that would be the response. I think there's something about Pulisic. And I don't know what it is. I mean, I know people can talk about whatever political element is there. I don't think that's really a part of his his profile or, or how people perceive him. I think he's just thought of as this, I don't know, like kind of quiet, not accessible kind of guy. Even though he's done a ton of media, he never f- looks like he enjoys it, right? And I'll, I'll, it I'll, t- I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, what, what I don't trust, why I don't trust Christian Pulisic. Dude's what, 23? 23? Something like that. Champions what? League in his pocket? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know who's dating. Why does that matter? I don't care. I, I don't care if it's a guy, a girl. I don't care who it is. I, 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 what? It's not better than the guys who go and get married at 22 and then you're like, dude, what are you doing? Why are you looking? Who's saying anything about marriage? I'm saying saying the opposite. No, I, I, okay. All right. Son, be a plumber, lay some pipe. You know, like, like, no, 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 no
know, and I don't have the board, so I can't play. This is not my. I don't have the. I don't know if I can trust a 23 year old young man that's not out there doing something in the world. I feel like he goes home and does like right. Bible study. What? No, but what? Okay, first of all, there are lots of, of people who would think that that would be a lovely thing for him to do, to go and, and dive into the scripture and really, you know, immerse himself in that and be a role model. I, I'm for down him. for it if he can find a miracle at the World Cup somehow. So if, think, if he can do that. You know, look, I am of the opinion that American soccer needs a little bit more of the TMZ element to make it yes. look like I do agree. And I listen, and my problem is we're, we're hitching our wagon to Weston Star, and I just don't know if he can tow that line by himself. He does seem to carry all of that load on his own, right? He does. Is there anyone There's else that there's trying? Tim Way is trying. Tim Way is trying. I think the I think the part of the problem is that Tim Way is club smooth. status doesn't convey upon him the same sort of like glow. I also think Tim Way is too smooth. I think he's too smooth. Weston's not trying to necessarily be smooth. He he his the fact that he doesn't care and he's smooth anyway, <laughs> that's what's cool about him. Yeah. Tim Way, I don't know. His Instagrams look a little too staged. There is a I don't want to I don't want to just like put everybody in a box, but there is sort of like these archetypes that are being. Oh, it was a good question from Steve, by the way. There's some archetypes here. I mentioned Christian Pulisic looking like he was in a boy band in the '90s. Uh -huh. there, there are there are sort of like these guys are like this the this one and the that one. Like Weston is the gregarious outgoing one. I've said he's like the the BMOC, right? He's the the coolest guy on on campus. Everybody loves him. Even the kids who aren't very popular are friends with Weston McKinney. Uh, like again, he could be. He could be the, the starting quarterback on the football team. And then you, you've got the quiet one. and you've got the, That's what the, Steve's the asking one. here in the chat. He says, Jared, do you want Pulisic to be Balotelli or Kaká? And there's only one or the other. I guess those are the only, the only uh, options. Those, that, by the way, those guys are the I want him to have Kaká's, more of Kaká's career, okay, so, but I want him so, to have more of a little Balotelli edge. Okay. You know Kaká, famously very Christian, right? Yes. You know that. Okay. Just making sure that that's, that's what we're talking about here, right? Yes. That's what I'm this, assuming that's what he's talking about. By the way. Superlatives for the U.S. men's national team. Sort of a most likely to do that. <laughs> okay, well, here, here's the assignment then. Nick, yeah. okay, you've got 20 minutes, around the 45-minute mark. We need to bring you on, and you need to give us some classic yearbook superlatives, and Jason and I will just, off the top of our dome, what they are. Like, cutest, most likely to succeed. You know those things, mm -hmm. Nick? Can you Best grab maybe answer. five to ten of those, and by the uh, end of the show, yeah. we'll come on That's and we'll just freestyle them. Those kind of things. But before we move but, on to another topic, I think we got a caller on me. We want to get, touch this one. And this, song, this came up with Burhalter on Football Americas, too. So we're just grabbing stuff from Sebi. And, Herc and Seb and are doing Herc. a fantastic job over there on that show, by the way. They, they got those guys on the same show. Uh, it's about the striker situation. T from New York, what's up? Oh, hey, I just wanted to talk about the fight. First of all. I couldn't agree with Jared Moore. The guy won a champion to just have a girlfriend yet. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you don't know his life. He's like, he's a funny guy. Yeah. Like, listen, like, I'm so sorry. But, like, as a so young person, like, you can't win a champion's week and not, like, I mean, that's conference issues at, at the most. I mean, that's, that's a problem. Yeah, by the way, I, I, I vote for I vote for Nick to always have control of the board because that was the most best that was the best timing for a drop I think we may have ever had on the show, right? When he chose to do it. I, I do think that he does fine. I don't want to know details. I Maybe my man's just super private. So I don't know. T T, hold on one I mean, second. There's biblical there's biblical like verses on his Instagram, like just okay. interesting. Okay. okay. I don't that's his business, but I have a question for Mr. Dubois. This is my yes. question. Would you believe that the U.S. men's national team is more prepared to make a run at the World Cup if Christian Pulisic was dating, dating a girl? I don't know, like the hottest English pop star. No, but okay. more people would watch it. <laughs> Not an English. Are we talk, and, wait, 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 wait. You just said an English star? Like any American yeah. knows an English star? Like. Are, oh, you, for sure you are, you, are you saying are, we, we, do you, are you saying that people outside the U.S. would think the U.S. would have a better chance because they would know it or something like that? Did he get more clout no, with the English? Is that what you're that's saying? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying he lives in London. I mean, I'm if he's dating Emma Thompson, are we like talking I'm, about anything? I'm trying to push the guy away from a long-distance relationship. I'm saying that it would be better for him. Now, if he was going to date a young lady close to his age, I would suggest, can you imagine if... Christian Pulisic wore the number 11 and he dated Millie Bobby Brown. Come on. 
No, okay. There's. I think there's. I don't. Does that age work? I don't know. She's eighteen or nineteen now. Yeah. She. Okay. Yeah. I feel weird about that transition. By the way, makes me uncomfortable. It's not for us. It's for Christian. What about Dua Lipa? If Christian Pulisic was dating Dua Lipa, would that be a big deal? We all can admit that Dua Lipa, Dua Lipa is too much woman for Christian Pulisic. <laughs> okay. All right. Interesting. It. Go yeah. On. Why not Cardi B? Like, <laughs> what's he going to do with that? Oh, man. Wow. Wow. That is that is so. You don't know. You're so rude. You don't know. Okay. T, go ahead, man. Oh, so yeah. The main reason why I was calling in is about the the strikers situation and i just have to say like as a fan and as like someone who wants to see the team do well i just can't see how you have jesus Ferreira as a starter i mean the guy is just he's not putting the ball in the back of the net and i guess like in a world cup situation you're not going to have that many chances each game you're not there's not going to be you know another chance and another chance and another chance you might only have one or two great chances and if he's not finishing them off, I mean, that's how you go out of World Cups. And, like, we were struggling to score in the, in the qualifiers. I mean, it's going to be very I, difficult, I, I feel I, like. I got a question for T. Time. Okay. You want to go I, first? I, I, go. I got a question for T. T, what's your age, man? Me? Yeah. I'm 20. All right, 20. So, literally, you were being born in, 2000, in 2002. Do you, do you know anything about that 2002 team? <laughs> I do. Okay. Do you know how? Do you know what round of the World Cup they went out in, by chance? I won quarterfinal. Quarterfinal. Quarter very good. Very good. Quarterfinals. And do you know that they were one bad call away of a handball by Torsten Frings for going to the semis? Yeah. Right? You know what? You know what? Though. You know what? I mean, I know about that. Like the reality is, it would have been one one, and I honestly don't think. Hey. Yeah. Maybe they don't do it in overtime, but they didn't get the chance. Yeah. But my my thing is, that team had. An MLS striker on it. It had an MLS a lot of things, and I just want to make. I want to drive home the point though that it's not always where the player plays; it's who they play with and how they play. I don't think. Oh, I never. I never said. I never said that. I don't. I could care less if he's from MLS or if he's from the the Hungary second division. I could care less. The reality is, is when Jesus Ferreira, you know, has a chance, he doesn't put it in, and that's for me is just like Christian Pulisic. My God. Well, okay. T, I mean, T, T, hold on a second. T Damn, saying, dog. That's in a pros. You're saying that Jesus Ferreira has not scored enough for the national team, right? You're, that's what you're talking Not his club form, the national yeah. team. Yes? Okay. I mean, he also hasn't scored recently. Who is club, a better really. option? T, T, who is a better option than Jesus Ferreira? So, because if you go away from Ferreira, you're going to have to turn to a guy who has also no goals or very few goals for the national team. Yes. Yeah. That guy doesn't exist, right? You, you know, but here, here's, here's, you know, I get that. And here's my, my, my one problem with that. I feel like, you know, Burhalter is so set up with Hazy Ferrer right now. And I feel like he, he is, I believe, you know, not my number nine, but Burhalter's number nine. But I would much rather see Pepe even in that role or someone, I mean, even like, I know it's a long shot pick, but like, I still believe, and I'm, I know I'm just going to be unpopular, but I still think that Sargent's the most complete striker in the pool. I know he's not going to get the man. call up, but man, I right, wish well, he look, did. I'll, I'll say yeah. this. I'll say this, T. Uh, hold on a second. I might want to give you another chance to talk, but I want to jump in here because Berhalter addressed this, again, as I said, on Football Americas. And what he said when asked by Hercules Gomez and, and Sebi Salazar was, we want a guy who's scoring goals. Right? He did he talked a little bit about the other stuff that a player can do. And, and I think Salazar asked him, he said, look, when I think about a striker and I think about form, I think about goals. But are you thinking about more than that? Are you thinking about other things that the player might do as part of a system? And Berhalter kind of said, well, no, we want a guy who's scoring goals. The problem is that player does not exist in the national team context, right? And, and it's going to come down to, now September might be a chance for two or three guys to get a look. I imagine that he's still going to give Ferreira some time because Ferreira has proven to be the best of a bad lot, I guess. I don't know. Um, but, Jared, you know, there's not a lot of time to figure this out. It might come down to, is Jordan P. Fox scoring in Germany? Is That's exactly what I'm thinking. Is um, Josh Sargent scoring in the second division in England? Yeah, for, for me, if, if P. Fox got on six goals in two months... 
and and Bundesliga, he may be on the team. He may be on the team because I don't know if another striker out of Jesus Ferrer is going to be on 15, 16 at least by then. But MLS was a, almost a full season at that point. So he's going to have plenty of goals to say, this is the guy. But the, he, he's not wrong when he says that Ferreira has missed opportunities at the, at the top level. But the, but, the, the problem with doing that, the problem with judging Ferreira on the chances he's missed with the national team is that you cannot be sure, and there's been no evidence that the guys that are sitting there not playing for the national team... I, would yeah, I don't think Pepe's team. necessarily clinical. I don't think there's a guy out there that is. So if, if yeah. in all things being equal, if we have... A, if we have a bunch of guys that hit, can't hit the so broadside of a barn at the number nine position, give me the guy that can't hit the broadside of the barn that makes Christian Pulisic and Tim Weah, Gio Reyna, and everyone else better around them. And, and so that's Jesus Ferreira. From Graham. Well, the top scorer for the national team is Oof. at the World Cup. And, and here's the thing. The World Cup, you may score four goals. You, you may be happy to score four goals in a World Cup, depending on how those results go. I wouldn't be surprised if Weston McKinney is the top scorer for the U.S. national team. Either. Would not be shocked by that either. Set pieces. Set pieces and late sure. runs. I mean, I, I, I would not be one at all surprised if that dude has three or four goals in, in the World Cup and leads the whole team. I, would, I, I think it, we, that might be right. T, you know, again, we've, there's not a great option, but you're advocating for Josh Sargent. I mean, it, it, we'll see if he gets a call. He, he really needs well, to start I have, well. I have one, I have one other name. Like, I feel like I feel like it's such a long shot. And it's like the last, this is the last question I got for both of you. If and I know this is like might be the longest shot. I actually feel like, like in the box and in the round, if you need a late goal, he actually might be the guy. If Daryl DK has a phenomenal start, which I personally believe he will, is there any chance he can get back in the team? You know, the First of all, kid what, what is a phenomenal start to you? Like, okay, so championship, I'm pretty sure they'd play more matches. So I think he would have like in 12 coming games around there. Okay. To prove himself before the September window. So, okay. I mean, if he's got, you know, maybe, let's say, five to six, which I okay. believe he could very well manage in that I, I, time frame, given what he's done if, there before. If Daryl DK is on five or six goals in the championship, I think maybe he goes, and here's the reason why. Hold on, hold on. He's not saying go to the World Cup. He's saying get called in for September to get a look to maybe oh. go well, to yeah. the World Cup. Okay, <laughs> even then, yeah. Yeah. Any of those guys early in the season, if they're on five goals at that point, are probably getting called in. And here's the reason why DK may end up even going if he's on five or six goals at the time that the roster is announced. Because the dude is a matchup problem for other teams. But even if he goes, I don't think you're starting him. I, I just think he's so such a dangerous player that like, sure. it's hard. It, he's always dangerous, I feel like. I feel like it's hard to leave a guy like that off the team. Well, but we were saying that about Pepe six months ago, right? The idea that... Not, not really. Pepe, you know, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, you know, Pepe's just not that... I don't think he's really a dominant force like, in that area. He's more of a, a, a lucrative, I guess you could say. You know, Pepe player, had more goals than DK, I, right? Like a well, club? I mean, you know, I think that was... In, I'm not sure. I think DK was injured a lot of last year. I think that was a big issue for him. DK's injuries have made but a major problem still, for him, that, and that's not his fault. But it does it does have to go into to Berhalter's thinking. Yeah, we'll let, we'll let T go. We had T on for for quite some time there. I would just want to say, and, and again, it I know be, it's a moving target, and we've been jumping around from name to name in in part because there is nobody who has sort of established themselves, and part of that is youth, right? Jesus Ferreira is a young player. Ricardo Pepe is a young player. Daryl DK is a young player. You don't have a veteran presence. The whole team is young, and nobody arrived at the level, at the same level as a Pulisic or a McKenney or an Adams, you know, at, at a Champions yeah, League or I, high level. I state. think, unfortunately, our, we, we, we've got to evaluate our strikers and put them into two separate pools and just understand that there's going to be a selection from both those two pools because we don't have any dominance. You have a pool of guys who can potentially score on a half chance on limited opportunities, strikers, striker, fox in the box kind of guy. And then you have guys who make the team better. And so you have the Ferreras, the sergeants. I'll tell you so. To, I'll say right now, I think the U.S. plays better in the times the sergeant has played as the offense, the movements, and the pressing. When sergeant's there, then many of the strikers that we've talked about so far today. It doesn't mean I think we should take him because Jesus Ferrer, I think, is even doing even better with that same thing. But... 
I think you have a pool of guys that make the team better and allow Berhalter play to play the type of ball he wants to play. And then you right. have the P Fox, the DKs, the Peppies. You have, maybe not Peppy, the P Fox, the 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 DKs, who are guys or matchup problems that can give you a a one chance to change a game. Peppy is the closest thing to a traditional striker that does both things okay, but has no confidence in himself right now. Yeah, I'm hoping that the new season brings him confidence. I mean, He's the closest but, thing to a complete striker, I think, that we have. I fully admit that this is just random at this point. Like, blindfolded, we're doing this. But I'm going to give you a name. Okay. Right? You know how odds work, right? You know how odds work? Like, 2 to 1, 5 to 1, 10 to 1. Why do you talk to me like I'm a fifth grader sometimes? I want to make sure. You know, I don't know what you're into over there. I know you, you play poker. You know it's just poker. in Vegas, right? Okay. So, I want you to, I'm going to give you a name. You give me the odds that that player is starting the opening game of the World Cup for the U.S. men's national team, right? It's Wales on November 21st. But you're asking me for percentages, not odds, right? Sure. Give me okay. A, you can give me a percentage, but I'm thinking, okay. like, okay, if I was going to place a bet on this player oh, being okay. the lead right. striker for the United States on that day, yeah. what kind of money am I going to get back in return? If I'm, you know, yeah. if I'm putting $100 down, am yeah. I, you know, gotcha. so... I'll give you a name. You tell me the odds that they're the 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 striker, the starting striker. Okay. Uh, Ricardo Pepe. We'll start with Ricardo Pepe. As a stri- as a starter, I would give you five to one. Five to one already. Right. That that those seem like pretty short odds to me for Ricardo Pepe based on his recent track record. But okay. okay. Uh, let's go with uh, Jordan Peefock then. See, a starter. I would starter. give you ten to one. Ten to one. Okay, I I would think you might even I, longer I, than ten to one. I, no, I think I think Burhalter I think Burhalter sees him as a as a stopgap measure, not a starter. Okay, but uh, what you're saying is there's still a decent ch- ten to one is yeah. It, those aren't because any one of these you could throw a dart and any one of these guys could be okay. on the roster that day. Okay, okay. So Daryl DK. Twenty to one. Josh Sargent. Eighteen to one. Interesting. Uh, Brandon Vasquez. 31. Okay. Uh, let's go with Jossie Zardis, who got name-checked by Burhalter when answering the question about strikers. I'm sorry, which one? Jossie Zardis. Man, I don't like this number, but because <laughs> Burhalter's the coach, he says starter, not going, starter. Starter. I'm going to put 15 to 1. 15 to 1. As a Jossie starter. Zardis. I don't think he's a starter. I don't think even if he goes, he's starting. No, I know, but I would not be based on. But he was, he but he wasn't talking to Berhalter about starting. He was talking about taking him. I correct. Used, he so when the question was asked, Berhalter did a Berhalter dance, which I expect him to do. I understand what he's trying to do. He was talking about options. He was talking about goal scoring. He talked about he talked about physical players, and, mm-hmm. and he mentioned Jossie Zardes as a physical player who gives center backs trouble because he's a, a body because he's a physical yeah. player. And didn't he didn't say anything about taking him or starting him, but he name checked Jossie's artist, which is why I'm mentioning him to you. And and I guess I don't think, I don't know if I'm out if I'm tapped out, but but Jesus Ferreira is the other the last name. Oh, I would I, odds on that. I would give you six to five. Okay, so essentially even odds. On, yeah. On Jesus slightly Ferreira. above, yeah, slightly above even, yeah. Okay. Because I think that's what about just, Tillman? My league starting. Tillman? I don't think that's he's on the player. roster, but I would say. Uh, I would give you for as a starter. First of all, I don't think he's a striker for Burhalter, no, but I, I would say, but that's okay. We didn't say it had to be strikers. We'd, uh, I would put him at fifty to one. Oh, we're doing that. Okay, um, Walker Zimmerman is a striker. He put a little striker for Nashville in there to get a loss on the weekend. <laughs> no, I, I put Till- Tillman at fifty to one. I mean, he would have to have an amazing run at, at Rangers to start the season. I think. Like, yeah, I think that was. I think that was the, like, hey, we got our eyes on you, kind of thing, kind of call up right there. How about Haji Wright? Haji Wright, I'd put Haji that's what Wright. I mean. that's the one oh, I mean. excuse me. Uh, Haji Wright, I'd put Haji Wright 8 to Starter. 1. 8 to 1. Okay. I think that's reasonable for Haji. Because re- okay. it sounds like now he's re signing with the same team he was already at, right? Is that the most recent thing? I haven't actually checked up on Haji in this transfer. I think status. the latest thing that he was going to re sign with is his current Turkish team. Like they are finalizing that loan to become permanent. And that so if that's the case, I mean, there's no reason to think that he can't be. Uh, just as productive next season in the same st- setup in the same league. And if that was good enough to get him a call up and actually feature a little bit, I think that gives him a leg up on guys like, uh, like Sergeant who's going to the championship and doing something that's a little bit different. I mean, like he's already there. Pookie staying. 
like Pookie's staying with that team. He's still starting for them right now. I was really well, surprised. I, I figured he would have had an out. Won't move into the center forward position, which I do think has an impact on his ability to make this team and be part. Be, be a, you know, be a yeah. But if he was player. playing week in week out as a, as a, as a center forward, maybe that gets him an opportunity. Yeah. I, I just don't think they see him that, that, that at that club. But so uh, there is um, there there are a couple of moves that we should talk about. I mean, I didn't I hadn't checked on Haji Wright. Didn't know if he was staying where he was in Turkey. Uh, Chris Richards may be added to Crystal Palace. That's not a done deal yet, right? They're still talking about it. It sounds like, I mean, it was reported today by, I can't remember who it was, uh, Pedal Sport or something like that. I can't remember what it was, but it was, uh, someone was reporting that it's basically done. So at this point, I would say, let's talk about it as if it is. So I think for Chris Richards, it's high risk, high reward. The easy thing was to stay at Hoffenheim if Hoffenheim was willing to 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 purchase him because he's already a no point for that, that fee. They weren't going to give him. Yeah, that. but I'm just saying in terms of his World Cup being ready to be a starter for day one at the World Cup, um, I think at Hoffenheim he would have got minutes. He would have had a, a good level of uh, of comfort. Of comfort. I think by going to Crystal Palace, he's going to have to fight for a spot on a new team, which I think, once again, I like that an American is challenging themselves to play at the Premier League, but it also comes with, we may be talking come September that Chris Richards has started two games. That's a possibility. And then you're saying, is he the guy to start next to Walker Zimmerman, assuming Zimmerman's still the guy? Who, who are we talking about? If, if Chris Richards has four starts by the time the World Cup rolls around, is he your starter for the national team? Yeah, that might be tough. I mean, I would I would expect a, a, a team, a player like Aaron Long, who's going to be playing consistently. They're going to make the play. I think the Red Bulls are probably. But if Crystal Palace is them. paying the money that Byron wants, you got to think they have him in his plans to do something better than just starting a couple of games here and there. But yeah. it's still a new environment. Yeah, it, I think it's supposed to be about twenty million pounds, which is uh, that's a lot for a center back for, for Bayern Munich on a player who has you know has done something, has played yeah. a little bit for Hoffenheim, but doesn't. A proven commodity by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, mm. Palace is not a team that can go and waste money on a twenty million pound player, but it doesn't guarantee him playing time either. Uh, although, do you think it matters at all who the manager is in this situation? Because I could have for Chris Richards at Crystal Palace. Yeah, just because I can imagine that a coach who has no exposure to American soccer might look at a, an American player and go, "I don't know," or not give them as much. Of a chance as a play, but but Patrick Vieira's got that experience. I'm not saying he knows Chris Richards as a player. I'm just saying he's got that experience with American players. You know what? I think that having Patrick Vieira be the guy that that brings him in is a good thing. Um, a, like I said, I don't think there's nearly the same um, uh, st- uh, stigma around American players with a guy who spent time, chose to come here. Um, it, I think, if I remember correctly, I mean, he, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's another American I could have sworn that he brought to one of his teams shortly after he went back to Europe, but I'm blanking on that now. But um, I, I think that also, there's not many guys, I know Patrick Vera was a midfielder, but a defensive yeah. midfielder. Yeah. There's not many guys that you would want giving instruction in terms of positioning, when yeah. to commit to a ball, that just kind of thing. Attitude. One of the best my, player minds ever in the premiership. Yeah, how about just giving competitor Richards a little bit more a little bit more teeth like just a little bit more of an edge because i think yeah you know, chris richards is a gifted if chris, athlete if you think chris richards is going to listen to sam or sam allardyce or patrick Vieira in terms of how to go into a tackle well i mean you know certainly patrick Vieira has got that the only thing sam allardyce is tackled as a meat pie do you think that chris richards has seen patrick Vieira play Man, you know, those Arsenal teams were pretty, pretty popular. And Thierry Henry, if he watched Thierry Henry videos, he probably saw Patrick Vieira videos. Okay. That's a good um, but I, I listen, I, I'm sure they're known commodities to each other from the time in MLS. A little bit, maybe a little bit. I, I don't know. No. I think I can't believe Richards, where Richards was in the system when he Patrick was, Vieira was. He, he was an Alabama kid who went to Texas and got into the yeah. FC Dallas Academy after a stop in Houston, I think. But he never he never played for Dallas. He and absolutely never played for Dallas. So there would be no exposure unless yeah. Patrick Beer was watching youth games for the or Dallas, Dallas Cup, Cup or Dallas Cup or something like Possibly. that. Maybe yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. Again, I'm not saying that there's some familiarity there that that gives Chris Richards an edge at Crystal Palace. I'm just wondering if Patrick Beer, having been in the United States, spent time 
coaching in American soccer has a different attitude than a lot of European managers might bring to the table when they look at an American player. And I know you're supposed to be, you know, unbiased as a coach. It doesn't matter where you come from as long as you can play. But we know that that's not how it works in practice a lot of times. I think there are, are, are we allowed to have the conversation I want to have? I want to, I want to ask a question, and it's probably bad luck or superstition. Like, <laughs> what's, what's the... Oh man, okay, hold on. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it softly real first, and you tell me if it's okay. It doesn't, how does it matter? It doesn't matter if you say. Can it we soft. have a conversation about what's the worst injury that could happen to the U.S. before the World Cup? Oh my God, man! What are you? That's, that's like what? What's the, what's the worst thing that could happen to us in the in, in this time? So you're kind of. I have a name in my head. I, what I really want to asking is that Which if we match on the name board. that's in my head, I'm just wondering if we match on the name in my head. Isn't this the same as the most important player in the team? No. The most irreplaceable. Irreplaceable player. That's the one I'm talking okay. about. Okay. So I have a name in my head. Should we one, two, three it? We can one, two, three it. Or yeah, three, two, one, one it? Three, two, one, three, two, one it. Okay, ready? I'm out. Yeah. Three, okay. two, one, Anthony Robinson. What? Oh, come on. You there's no backup for Anthony Robinson. It, but it does, okay, but you, I understand that, that there's no your backup for Andy Robinson, but in terms of the way the team functions, you you're 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 talking about Adams. most important. I, I, I'm talking about like the one they can't afford to lose. Like that's they can't afford to lose Tyler Adams. They lose Tyler Adams. The world okay, but think about Adams. this for a second. In Kellen Acosta, Luca De La Torre, Weston McKinney, Yunus Musa, you have a number of guys who can change the shape of the midfield and still be you successful. Have to change the shape of the midfield, yes, that is but. Right. Although, For Andy Robinson, Robinson, now we're talking about starting what, Sam Vines against uh, a, 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 against like uh, Raheem Sterling. I mean, like, what are we, we what are we doing here? <laughs> I, well, I'm not sure I'm, I like Andy Robinson against Raheem Sterling. So I, don't know, I don't know if it really matters. It gives us a better chance, though. I mean, I, I suppose familiarity uh, at that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I suppose the the the, the position. You're now you're asking which position. He has the least depth. That's essentially the, the you know, reformulating what you're but, asking. That's a question. But, and also the step down to, in the depth is that large. Now, you could put Dest over there. You could. You could put depth, depth, depth is having a player who is close enough to the starter that you don't feel like you're losing a lot. You're saying that the drop from Andy Robinson to whoever backs him up is large, and I agree with that. But I, don't, I do think you can And think how much, of the, uh, how much of the offense over the last six months has come through Andy Robinson's production. He has been important, and but but here, here's okay. How about this? I'm not, I'm not necessarily arguing with you. I just want to present a different take on this. If Andy Go Robinson on. goes down, and I'm not saying that there is a clear option. Certainly, there's nobody who is as dangerous going forward who you also trust defensively. I do think you could turn that left back into a stay-at-home player, or ask whoever's the backup to be a stay-at-home player. I would still worry about defending, but it yeah, wouldn't be but, as risky. And true, but you're making you Christian Pulisic's Sergio, job way harder. You have Serginho Dest. No, that's true, but you have Serginho Dest on the other side. Or you flip-flop Serginho Dest, which is probably what would happen in that scenario. Yeah. And now you're playing this. this and I, I, I'm pretty sure we talked about this already, and it has come up, that it feels as though the backup option at left back is Serginho Dest. And if Anthony Robinson goes down, and then you work with your right back depth, which is Reggie Cannon, DeAndre Yedlin, perhaps Joe Scally, right? So I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's the answer to your question. Because if you're putting Dest in for Robinson, defensively, I still have my concerns. But you're not losing the attacking ability uh, that Robinson brought to True. the table. You might be improving that depending on how. But you're losing a lot of defensive ability. You're you're. T- well, okay. Who's starting? If Sergio Dest is the starter at right back, Andy oh, Robinson- I'm sorry. If, I was thought you're saying if you put him at left back over Robinson, you're having a defensive downgrade. Oh no, I know, but we're we're imagining a world in which our Robinson yeah. is hurt and not available. So you're putting, yeah. de- you're putting Dest over there. Now you're asking your midfielders to help cover that flank when Sergio Dest goes wandering upfield, which he's going to do. Right? You're yeah. choosing to put that on the field. I, I don't know if Burhalter will love it, and I'm not sure that. I mean. I suppose it's also possible that he says, all right, look, um, let's bring um, a George Bellow. Maybe George Bellow improves dramatically between now and the World Cup. Maybe Sam yeah. Vines, as you said, is the option uh, coming out of Belgium. Maybe he chooses one of those players, a naturally left-footed player, to play at left back in place of Anthony Robinson. Maybe Jonathan Gomez changes his mind and plays for the U.S. Sure. I don't think he's going to be at that level by the time we get to the World Cup either, right? Let's, Jonathan no. Gomez, as much as I know, our friend Nicholas Murray will – 
cape for Jonathan Gomez, he's not going to be ready for a World Cup level for Mexico or the United States when he gets there. Yeah. All right. By the way, since we're, I know we're, we're talking about all this national team stuff, did you hear the weird rumor? I think it was just some random guy writing a blog, so I'm probably overstating what it was. There was a weird rumor that Julian Araujo wanted to switch back. <laughs> that was I saw one outlet put that out, and no one else corroborating that. Yeah, that's, it was, I, plus, it was, it's not even possible at this it's point. It's not possible. He filed his one-time switch. He can't go back to this way. I don't think. Yeah, but I don't I think there's any that, way that happens. I did, did love the framing of, well, Mexico is so bad. They they dropped. They you know they, they the, lost. As a Galaxy supporter, I'm going to tell you, Junior Rojo is not good enough for our national team right now. He's okay. not. He's not. Okay. And when Brian, when when Derek Williams over the weekend was talking about people not being on the page and playing for themselves, I think he's talking about Julian Rojo. Mm. I really do. The kid is just, he doesn't, he's got amazing tool sets, but I just don't think mentally he, he just blacks out rage. It's like water boy or something like that. Like he just, <laughs> for a moment, he just loses himself and does stupid things sometimes. I just don't know what it is. So for me, I, I, I while I love Julian Rojo and I think he's a one for the future for either Mexico, or I guess for sure for Mexico or the U S um, I just don't think right now he's on the, that level. So we had, uh, we had a, some shot in Florida. We enjoyed the fact that Mexico got bounced from the U 20 championships, oh, yeah. oh. missing out on the U 20 world cup, missing out on the Olympics. They fired a bunch of people, Jared, and the women missed out on, on the uh, World Cup as well by getting bounced in the in the CONCACAF W Championship. Everyone but Tata was on the curb. Everybody but Tata and his staff, and and he's they seem committed to him, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. We should mention that the U.S. women won the CONCACAF Championship last night, and the best part about it is that they put 20 margaritas worth in that cup, in that trophy that they were celebrating with in Monterey. I think it was in Monterey. Nice. Was. Uh, you know, you got to do it big when you're in Mexico, right? You have to, you have to do it big. I know a lot of people that have woken up in tough situations that went after doing it big in Mexico. So it's so funny. We talked about Christian Pulisic saying something like, "We we want to go and try to win the World Cup. Why wouldn't we want to try to do that? If you don't believe it can happen, it won't happen." Meanwhile, the U.S. women are held to this impossible standard where they if they don't just absolutely batter everybody then Vlaco deserves to go or he's turning. I mean, is it any different than the dream team or something like that going to the Olympics? I mean, but, but is that really the gap is the gap between the U S women's national team and the rest of the world, even cocky calf. Is it, you know what that, that, I mean, there are basketball, international basketball teams that are giving USA a run for their money. I mean, oh, maybe I, it's because USA is not giving as much of a, a, a try. And it's not the same thing. Cause these teams, these guys get together for a Nobody month cares and about the, go play the dream but... team anymore. The best players don't show up for the dream team anymore. That, that was a <clears throat> yeah. moment in time, but I'm talking about the U S women, not even being able to sort of figure things out with a new generation of players without there being this hand wringing over, oh my God, they're not as good as they should be, or they're, this is bad, or Vlaco screwed this up, or whatever it might be. And again, they're missing, they're missing some important pieces. Katarina Macario is supposed to be next up, and she's missing with an ACL injury and kind of threw the whole CONCACAFW championship thing into a little bit of disarray. And they still scored 13 goals and gave up zero and won the tournament. And yeah. it's like... We can't even be happy about it, right? Because that's CONCACAF. They're supposed to walk CONCACAF. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I think the gap in Europe, this may be the, this this next World Cup cycle for the women is going to be, I think, the, the, the one where everyone catches up. I, I, I just feel it. I think there's... How long have we been saying that? Seriously, we've been oh, saying it for 10 years. I feel like there's, a, there's an identity crisis with, US, with the women's team right now, too, in terms of the old guard, new guard kind of thing and like the, being ready. I don't know. Is there? Sophia Smith, is she not ready? You guys don't think she's ready? You think Mal Pugh's not ready no, right it's now? It's not that they're not ready. I just feel like we're still hanging on to a couple of people that maybe we but shouldn't have to hang on to look still. Look at the team Vlaco played last night, and look at the way that that went. And, look, and I know they won one nothing on a penalty kick, but they, they had four or five good chances they weren't able to finish. And you can argue that, hey, finishing's not good enough, but Sophia Smith puts herself in positions to score goals. Mallory Pugh puts herself in positions to score goals. Rose Lavelle is legit world class and doesn't get enough respect. Do you feel the same way about your name and nothing about offensive players? Do you feel the same thing about the defensive side. I mean, I think I think uh, Naomi. That's Naomi where I worry Kerma, about. Naomi Kerma is legit, and she's just now turned pro. She's in her first season with San Diego. She's getting rave reviews in the NWSL, which you know, as far as leagues go, is a pretty good test of a young female player. And she's in the national team picture already. And and they're you know Emily. Fox U.S. Women, do me a few favor. Go to Europe. Go to Europe. I mean, I think that's fine. That that's fine. I don't I don't know that it's a higher level in every situation, 
you may have the like if you play at Lyon, you're going to go win some stuff. You know, if you play, yeah. if you play in the Super League, you're going to play for a famous club. But is it a better level? I do, I talked to I talked to State Casey Stoney on the radio show that I have. Uh-huh. Jared, are you you aware that I have a radio show? I do. What I'm not aware of is if Nick has the drop or not. I don't know if Nick has the drop either. <laughs> Holding on breath to see if Nick can find. He's looking through a, <laughs> like a list of drops right Nick, now, trying to find. Nick, it. you bring yourself on the air and you go WNBC, 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 WNBC. He, sound, he sounds just like Howard Stern. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, on the radio show, I talked to Casey Stoney. What was she wearing? Uh, that's weird, dude. No, no, weird. no, not like in a weird way. She is fashion impeccable is what I'm saying. She was in the middle of a, tra- a day of training. She was, oh, wearing okay. a, she was wearing a standard coaching. You know, What'd she do coaching. with all those overcoats now she's in San Diego? That's, I think she's enjoying herself without overcoats. Uh, anyway, I don't know what her so. style is without overcoats, though. Okay. Left Manchester United to come coaching in WSL. And I asked her about the style difference. And she said, you know, she did speak to what you might expect even, you know, in the men's game is the same kind of thing. She's like. This game, the game here is faster. It is more physical. It's more direct in the sense that players get the ball, want to go score, instead of sort of pausing, taking that breath, trying yeah. to control the game. So, you know, if you are talking about the development of women's soccer, those nations where the culture is built in and women are, you know, allowed to play and given support, they're going to play like their male counterparts in the same culture, right? Spanish yeah. players. On the men's side are going to be the similar to the players on the women's side and vice versa. And, you know, that may be an area that the U.S. women get passed by in. But I still think that there is enough talent coming through that they may not be dominant and they may not be – they may not win. Look, they went – how many years between World Cups? 99 to 2015. Like, that's a yeah. gap, right? Yeah. For us. We, we were expecting more, I guess. Now they won two in, the, two in a row and it's like – you know, I don't know. Yeah, how many of those players are going to be on this roster, though? From this next roster. Yeah. Um, Thirty percent, probably. Yeah, something like thirty percent. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe, enough. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe. All right. So we gave Nick a homework assignment earlier. Can we? Uh, can we go revisit it? Oh, you gave him extra time too. I give you. I give you some credit for that because I think you were trying to get him, get him on the air with this a little bit earlier. Nicholas soup and salad. There he is. Well, so Nick, first of all. I'm not going to play the Sausage King drop, all right? It's a little weird to play my own drop. No, it's not. Okay. I, no, it's not. Jared would play his own drop if he could. We gave him control. He'd drop it every five Nick, five. were you kind of kid that had a lot of people sign your yearbook? Yeah. Okay. Did you win any superlatives? Were you like in your yearbook for a superlative or anything? No. No. Oh, okay. Most likely to Jason? host a, a food blog, a, a, vid, a blog <laughs> <laughs> in Cincinnati, Ohio. No. <laughs> Nicholas Uberling. Mine would yeah. probably would have been like most likely to miss a field goal. Uh, oh, geez. Heartbreak no. City. Yeah. No spoilers for me. I went to three different high schools. Last one, I was... Most likely not to be there at the end of the year. That, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Most All right, Nick, what you got for us? I was going to be forgotten about. All right, so the first superlative that I uh, pulled up here. Let's see here. Now, it's kind of odd because it's... When you do a search for superlatives, it's kind of giving you both for the men's side and the women's side. So, like... It, for instance, there's one. These are sexist. Is that what you're saying? There's, there's, there's yeah, like kind a, of. I'll okay. tell you, what, we're going to be unisex here. We'll pick whoever on either sex that we think feels fits best. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. All right. So the first one. Well, let's go, class clown. Class clown. Oh, jeez. That's Weston McKinney. Are we talking only the current roster? Like, do I go back to Frankie Hayduck, or do we just talk a current roster? No, 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 old man. This is current Current roster that we're talking about. Here's the problem. I think Weston McKinney is going to fit for, like, four of these. (laughs) So That's the problem. Yeah. But But that being said, if there's one I'm going to pick out of everything, it's probably going to be this one, though. That was high school. That was what high school was. There was, like, one kid that was like, okay, anyway, go ahead. And we got what we got uh, Nick, Nick, Nicholas in the chat saying the Jedi class yeah, that clown. That could be he could be up for class clown. Oh, it's gotta be one. yeah. I mean, he faked us out on the injury with the goal yeah. celebration. Mm-hmm. That's a good That's shot. Best Nick. actor. <laughs> ah, there it is. Yeah, that right. might be. That might be right. How about most changed? Most ah, changed. Oh, most well, changed. Okay. I guess this if they're like on most, the team, it's for the better. This is most improved player, basically, is what you're asking. I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess we could do it like that. Um, most change for me. You know what? I, I, guess. I, mean, I, I got a pick. shout. I got a pick. Okay, yeah. go ahead for it. Go first. I'm going to go Matt Turner. Interesting. Wasn't really on the radar. Then got okay. in the picture. And now we make the argument here that 
he should be the starting goalkeeper. I have, I have two thoughts, but I'm gonna let you go first, Jared, because I don't. Want I to have one first. that came to my mind, and I'm not sure why, but I mean, defender of the year for a couple of years, but I'm gonna say Walker Zimmerman is mine. That name came to mind for me too. Uh, oh, this is a good one, also from uh, Nicholas in the chat. That's Kellen Costa. I think Kellen Costa okay. changed a lot of people's minds over this last year. Sure. Walker, the, the shout for Walker is that he was like an addition because they had some players drop out. You remember, I think it was a COVID thing or something, and Weston got added, and then he established himself, and boom. So I, I agree on that. The other one is 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 Luca. I think Luca probably fits in this guy. I, you know what? I think it's like more of a breakout than most change for Luca, though. Well, he wasn't on the. But the, again, as Nick said, not on the radar. Like not even in the picture. You know, thought of people knew about him, and he was doing things in Holland. But there was this sense that Berhalter wasn't going to give him a chance, and he's whatever. But you know, remember the controversy? He did an interview where he said Berhalter thinks I'm not good enough in transition, and everybody rabble, rabble, rabbled. He got on the team. He took his spot. He took his shot. He earned it, and now he's sort of locked in for Qatar, barring a disaster. All right, going the other way though, I would say Josh Sargent. Oh, you mean dropping off? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Gonna make it negative and sad. I mean, from a from a just <laughs> penciled in, called into camp every time guy under Berhalter to not at all. You know, it, it went for John Brooks. Never mind, John Brooks. John Brooks. That's the answer. Oh, that's a good John one. Brooks John Brooks is the answer to that one. Answer. John Brooks is the answer. Okay, what's next? All right, let's go with, which I think we all know the answer to this Cutest? one. Oh. Well, we well that wasn't the one I was gonna go with. Oh, okay. Uh, life of the party. Life of the party. Oh, Again, I know this one already. Probably Weston. Ah. Uh, no. Tim Weah. Mm. Tim Way is life of the party. Tim Way is DJing the party. A hundred percent. Tim Way is. DJing That's the lifeblood of the party. Could be, could be that. I, yeah. It could be Weston here as well, though. But so I'm just it, trying it, to pick someone because I already used a, him. A, let's paint a little bit of a picture. There's a room, okay? Mm -hmm. National team play, and we're not talking about a locker room. That's a different vibe. I'm talking about like, okay, or maybe at, they're at the club or something. They're in the VIP section. Who's doing? Give me just pick three or four guys. Who's doing what specific? In the VIP section. In the VIP section, yeah. Okay, I think Tim Weah is the guy DJing or hanging out at the DJ booth next to Absolutely. the VIP area. Absolutely, that's right. Weston McKinney is the one making sure everyone's doing shots. And he's, <laughs> no, well, Weston might be doing that, but he might also be dancing. Like Weston might be the guy in the middle of the floor just doing. Christian Pulisic is in the VIP area, but he's texting people to come to the VP VIP area. He's on his phone doing something. It's something that has to do with the area they're in, but he's on his phone. He's in the corner. He's yeah. Doing, he's doing one of these things. He's like, he's doing one of these things. Brendan like, Aronson's in the VIP area drinking milk. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan Aronson is running around from group to group, making sure everybody is cool. Like, just doing like this. And by the way, I think Anthony Robinson's the one that's in the VIP area dancing. Anthony's probably dancing. That's true. That's 100% yeah. true. Yeah, and, yeah that, it, fill in the rest of them. I don't want to go through everybody in the team. On top of that, right. but yeah. We'll do a shelves. couple more. Hit them. No, yeah, hit, go ahead and hit the superlatives you got left. Uh, All right. So, by the way, I'm going to give full credit to uh, Shutterfly.com for this fantastic website. A hundred clever yearbook superlatives. Oh, I'm sure they're appreciating uh, the shout out. They need us. Oh yeah, Shutterfly needs us. Yeah. Most <laughs> likely to be on Catfish. Oh, oh <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> Wait, as the person catfishing or as the person getting catfished? I think getting catfished. I think getting, right. catfished. getting catfished. Person most likely to be wow, rough, catfished. Wow. Do I want to put my name on whatever this is that, this, you're about to, that we're about to do? Do I want that? I think the most per light person catfished is for Christian Pulisic. Okay. Shh. 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 Am I wrong? You're right. You're right. <laughs> I, I, I think he's got a too good of a heart. You're absolutely right. Here's the here's the problem with Christian Pulisic and everything we've said today about like significant partners and all this other stuff. He has too good of parents. That's what it comes down to. His parents are too good and too much a part of his life. And if it is a good problem to have, it's a good problem to have. The kid's too wholesome. Oh man! All right, the last one. Hold on. What is Tyler doing in the, the VIP? The kids. He still snacks on veggie straws. What is Tyler doing in the VIP? Man, I'm not sure if... I think Tyler's home studying for the game the next day. I don't think he's in the VIP, okay. man. He, he shows up. He goes to the VIP. He's there for 10 minutes, and, he's, and then he dips out. Yeah, he does the courtesy. He he does, then he does the, the French exit or the Irish goodbye. He doesn't do the Irish goodbye. He says You don't goodbye. think so? No, he okay. says goodbye. But he might do it as the big goodbye. No, I think he does do Irish goodbye because he doesn't want the guilt that Weston's going to give him for leaving early. 
Yeah, Weston would grab him around the neck. He, and Weston him wants everyone there until oh the place gosh. closes. Absolutely. And and I, I don't know if you're going to get to most likely to succeed, but Tyler Adams is absolutely most likely to succeed. The attitude. I would put Brendan Aronson in there as well. The dude does his homework. Both of those guys. Yeah, both of those. Guys. Leads, you got two good ones. <laughs> let's go. Man, there's so many more that these I want to do, but we I don't want to be here all night. Okay. Uh, so let's end on this one. Most likely to survive the Hunger Games. Oh, man. Just, just a maniac who won't care about other people in any way, shape, or form. Who is that? So, it, there is a soullessness to this, but it's also like a dominance. In, okay, just survivability. Um, man. And there's not, see, here's the thing. There's not a there's not a Jermaine Jones or that's a, the kind of thing I'm I'm asking myself. Oh, I got it though. It is it is Kellen Acosta. You're right. He has an inner right. fire that the other rest of the guys on this team don't have. You know he what? can tap into something. We are talking about what we think a of darkness. a darkness roster. Matthew Hoppy would bite somebody. Oh, 100 percent. If we threw him in there, and I but think, he's not in the pool. No, I know. I think Luca De La Torre is another underrated option in this area. Think, oh, you I know, think, no, actually, you know who the, what the answer is? We're not talking about the guy who has a darkness in him that, that comes out is Gio Reyna. Oh, 100%. Gio Reyna or Kellen Acosta. There was one of those two is your answer. I, I'm going to make, I'm going to say something. This is, we haven't seen him. I know we saw him briefly. Yeah. At the end. We haven't seen him in so long that he doesn't even come to my mind right now with yeah. this team. And 100% yeah. he has a spot if he's healthy. But, man, we need Gio to get it together. I think Gio's the guy. Like I'm, I'm going to talk about something real quick. I, I think we all have this one friend in our – I mean, you've always all been to a bachelor party, right? I have. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is it just me or does everyone have that one friend in their group that falls in love with a stripper? Like, <laughs> th- like talking about paying for their education. Like that kind of – like I think Gio Reyna might them. be that guy. Gio Reyna's no. too nice. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. No, okay. no, no, no. I think... Reggie Cannon's I, trying to save a stripper. I think... G, this is going to sound bad, but it's not, because I'm not talking about anything illegal. I'm just talking about how group dynamics work. Geo is the friend that when you guys call it a night and you all head back to the crib, he's making plans for every when everybody's asleep and he's going back out. I, okay, I had a friend in... in, in, in I had a friend... Doing his stuff. I had a friend in college that, I don't know, maybe you guys have this friend too. He would do the opposite of try. Like, he was <laughs> so good looking that he would just wake up and, like, girls are, like, kissing him and he doesn't, he doesn't remember anything about it. Like, a problematic, problematic, okay? No matter what. But the guy didn't have to try. Like, it just things just happened for him. That's kind of Geo, I think, as well. I think the I world think. comes to Geo. Absolutely, you yeah, know that's probably true. That's and he's got Tiger Beat skills too. He's a, he's a cute kid. There's a lot of Tiger Beat in this team. There's, there's, there's a lot of Tiger. I mean, even more since this, someone found the bleach bottle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you. How much do you think he paid for that? Because he paid for it. How much do you think? He oh, paid for it? okay. I think that job cost him 150. He should get his money back. At least, at least 150. In London? Is that where no, did I think they did it at the national team camp, I'm pretty sure. It's just oh, the guy they fly in. It's the guy they fly in. Oh, I see. I used so to do it myself, did, and it looked yeah. better. Did you have the shower cap with the, with the holes in it? Hell yeah. With the fish hook? You Actually, got I didn't even do through? that. You used with full head? I used with full head. Do we have, have we seen a beach blonde dyed Nick Suberling picture? Does you one have. exist? You All right, we're going to have, have to give it to Morgan to put on the Instagram. We've seen that. I do. I I don't think any pictures exist of my attempts. You did it? I told I've I always told wanted you to. I, I never did. I always wanted to. It was such it. a San Diego thing to do in the early 2000s, man. I think I came out more orange than, than bleached ah, out. Yeah. The first yeah. time I did it, it was more orange. But then as you do it more, it lightens up. You got to really commit to it, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you have to live that lifestyle. That's, that's a different kind of life. It's a different kind man, of life. Those were the days. Man, that's some 41 blonde, man. life. Don't come easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's, uh, let's, call this, uh, let's call this thing. This has been a fun one. I, I'm glad I got to jump on from Puerto Rico and, and do this with you guys. Uh, as always, please give us a rating and a review. 
on your podcast uh, application of choice. If you are on Apple Podcasts, that's a great place. We will start to read them out as soon as we get them in again. I think that's a good idea. I think we tried to seed some some words for reviews last time out. I don't know if it worked. I don't know if it took. I'm not sure, but those of you guys, if you're not on the Patreon yet, or if you are and you haven't been there lately, there is a Bestie Zoom going down this Thursday, putting together by our boy Tom Op. He's putting that together for this Thursday. So if you want to meet some other people that uh, maybe you see here in the chat or just some good people that like to follow the game and uh, endorsed by us, uh, Bestie be Zoom going down this Thursday. Over there in that, in that Slack. We got some people working in the lower levels of American soccer. Uh, yeah. In one case, kind of on hiatus. In one, another case... I know that there was a big announcement in the Slack for I didn't see it. For our man David, who is working for Hartford. Herx? Yeah. No, I didn't see that. Athletic. So anyway, uh, I'm ah, not sure congratulations, that's David. Public. I'm sure that's public knowledge. Oh, oh it is I now. Think. Okay. I mean, I thought I don't know if he's. What I'm saying is, I don't know if he was like, "Oh, don't tell anybody." <laughs> I know there was an email that was shared where he okay. introduced himself. So shout out to David Herx. What else? Anything else? Any other business? Uh, I mean, Morgan would be remiss if we didn't mention the socials. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so so definitely follow us on Instagram and uh, so you can see Nick's uh, beach blonde hair. Hopefully that'll yeah. be up in the next 24 hours. The best soccer show on Instagram, bestie soccer on Twitter. Uh, I think that's good. There's a, there's a TikTok somewhere, I think, bouncing, bouncing around. I don't know. We need to check up on the TikTok. Mm. What's going on over there? Jared, you're on TikTok. What are you, what are you TikToking right now? I have never posted on TikTok, but I'm an avid consumer of, of it. That's what I oh, do. these what days what I'm consuming? Uh, let's see. I'm really into paranormal, like when people have videos of things moving in their house. I hate um, those. I think those are crap. I think they're trash, every single one of them. Like, that didn't really, that's not a thing. There's no ghost. You're, you I, I, okay, You're I mean, there's, lightsabers like don't cow. exist either, but I yeah. enjoy watching things about them. You know, like, right. yeah. I, I feel mean, like everything's about reality. very confused by me. I'm I'm all over the map. The algorithm needs to catch up. I got, I don't know what I want, but but, but the algorithm needs to figure it out. I'm I'm big on fart talk. Like any time a husband is farting on his girl or something like that, like I'm big on fart talk. No, absolutely not. No, I'm on comedy talk a lot. I get a lot of the the stand up stuff. That's all over the place. I get a lot of Puerto Rican content. I don't know why that happens. Any time a person uh, is falling down, like that's good for me. People are falling down. <laughs> you like watching people get hurt. Yeah. Saying. Okay. Right. Ratings and reviews, Patreon, uh, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. We'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Only the best will do. Only the best will do.